I wasn't going to be here. I mean, we have a quorum, so we can get started. If they come in, they come in. So, okay. So I call a meeting to order. It's twelve oh seven. Twelve oh five. I got twelve oh five. I got the notes. Roll call. Bailey's not here. Hathaway. Harsh not here. Holland. There. Hathaway. Nathawani. I'm sorry. The two. Right here. Present. <laughs> Sloan's not here. Smoltz here. Stites. Tank now. Right. Yes. Good. Audience participation. Um, let me see. If we have. There's a limit of five minutes per individual. Okay, I see a hand raised, um, so I'm going to do this correctly. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Go, go for it. Uh, okay, this is Pam Boyd. Good morning, 517 Linden Lane and Sio Community Newsletter. In regards to the agenda item of Parkland Plaza culverts, um, doesn't this fall in that category of maintenance that the DDA isn't supposed to handle? Now, granted, I am very much learning what your group does, and um, so this might be a naive question. Um, but I, I don't know, so I'm still asking it. So thinking back to the Jackson Road direction sign issue where you really couldn't do something new, it was best to just take it down. Um, so can you, in your discussion of the culverts, explain how the DDA can pay for the, the fix of these culverts for clarification? Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, what's next? Um, so, I think, um, I think Rob was next. Thank you. Uh, Rob Pattinson, 500 North Zeeb. Uh, I would urge the DDA to find out more information from the Washtenaw County Road Commission about why they want to fund the culverts in the way they have, because when the issue was raised at the um, at the Board of Trustees meeting uh, a month ago, uh, it was a surprise to most of the trustees because uh, this sort of request had never happened before. So this is something brand new and unusual, and I would urge you to get more information about why they're choosing to proceed this way. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I think the next is a phone number. Let's see. Hello? Hello. Hello. Hi, Alice. Hi. Hi, it's Alice Owing. Sorry, I am uh, far, far away, although just would like to stress I'm also not a resident of Sio Township, too, just in case that makes a difference. Um, I have also been um, interested in the way in which funding would flow from the DDA to the culvert repairs um, and have spent some time trying to understand with the DDA Act and the Michigan statutes where it is that authority to rehabilitate public facilities comes from other than in instances where it's designed to allow better access for handicapped individuals. Um, it may lie in some, you know, statutory provision or case law relative to appurtenances. And perhaps the township attorney can speak to that in giving his legal opinion on whether or not it's appropriate to raid the DDA for this money. I would like to stress, I think this is an absolutely fabulous project to undertake. I thank the Washtenaw County Road Commission for bringing the opportunity to us, which as I understand was brought to us by virtue of the fact that they have some leftover time and some leftover money. And any time that you, the township can spend $100,000 and immediately recoup $100,000 and take advantage of last year's contractual pricing, I think we should do it. 
but I think we should do it with a well-informed board of trustees approving it out of the general fund, not raiding the piggy bank that is the DDA. And so unless or until you get a legal written opinion that says this is a really good thing for you guys to do, I frankly think that this project, which I support, should get kicked back to the board of trustees and an informed decision based on sound municipal finance practices should be made at the board of trustees. I think to do otherwise, even if you say you're going to be following some, you know, prior um, practice where you guys, I don't know, paved a road in Parkland Plaza or you did some other thing that may be considered rehabilitation. I don't think that's a good thing. I think you need to look at the long-standing tradition of the DDA in not partaking of the maintenance, upkeep, and rehabilitation of the facilities that you guys fund. Because otherwise, there's going to be a lot of questions raised, and you guys may then get into the business of trying to fix potholes. And I don't think that's right. So I would like to, again, stress, I thank the Washtenaw County Road Commission for coming to us with a pressing issue and with an attractive financial plan to take care of it. And I appreciate that they've given us this extra time to consider it. And I hope our board of trustees will be well informed tomorrow when they make the decision. But I don't think this is a right decision or an appropriate decision for you all to make. And I really thank you very much for your service to the township in serving on this board. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Let me look and make sure here. Oh, I wish I knew how to make this mouse work better. Bigger up top there. Square. Uh, this square. Hit this. Oh, okay. I don't see any more hands. Okay. Now I just need to come back to. There we go. Okay. All right. Thanks for all the comments. Uh, guess we have it. Is Matt on the? Is he on the Zoom? Is he on the call? Uh, Matt McDonald. I don't see Matt in the. I thought Matt was going to be here. Well, he might be on the call later from Washtenaw. And then in the audience, too, you guys want to introduce yourselves, please? Go ahead. Um, hi, I'm Ann Jamison. Um, I'm with Jamison Development Consulting, and I'm assisting with the um, Smooch Trubido redevelopment project um, from the perspective of oversight, compliance um, related to using the grant funds accurately and making sure that the environmental consulting firms are. Uh, basically going through the bid process correctly, um, invoicing everything correctly to the township, um, and I'm here to answer any questions related to that. We'll get into that more in a little while. Uh, my name is Holden Branch. I'm the Brownfield Coordinator with EGLE, so Environment, Great Lakes, and Energy, so with the state of Michigan. Um, I'm all here to answer any questions on the Smooth Redevelopment Project. And you should have seen their names. Their names are in the um, document as well. Some emails we did the last between the meetings. Thanks, guys, for showing up. Let's go ahead and approve the minutes from last meeting. Again, these are posted as drafts, so they're already on the system. But we've got to approve them here. So, again, that was July. It should be in your packet. Where they are here. Yeah, it's about five pages in. It says draft on the front. Go ahead and skim through there and see how many errors I made. I got north and south Z corrected though. That was a
Any questions, comments on minutes? Any motion to approve? Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Minutes approved. Thank you. Uh, DDA's chair report. We'll get into the details uh, with everything here in a minute. I just want to say that Sandy's, Sandy um, is sick and I've got a card for her. Pass her around. Please sign this before I leave today. I'll send that. Supervisor's report, you got anything, Will? Uh, well, I think um, everything that I will report I will probably come up when we have um, discussion of various items later on the agenda. All right. So new business, we'll get into the um, culvert at Parkland Plaza right away. Uh, actually, if we could do the... Um, I guess we're not doing that. Well, I was just going to suggest, um, since Matt's not here, and oh, that's the one that he was going to speak to, um, maybe we could start with the Holmes uh, right. Brewery, because we have speakers here for that, and I'll try and contact Matt and see right, where he's at. Okay. Yeah, can you text or call? Yeah. So the Holmes Brewery, last meeting again in the, in the minutes, we approved a $350,000 grant Okay, it's not the TIF money, but it's it's grant money from the state of Michigan that these people were nicely able to help us um, uh, get for our uh, DD area. And they want to now, they have other um, assets that they can help us with. And that should have been in your kit. Let me go. Exactly what the township should be doing. It's about well, maybe 10 pages in. It's got eagle on the top of the sheet. And it's an amendment to the uh, agreement we already pre -approved, we approved last meeting. So again, we would amend the contract to include, was it, it $400,000? $400,000 more. Roughly, yeah. Yep, roughly, to the contract. <laughs> so during this, between the other brownfields we were looking at and this brownfield, you know, my concern was that the TIF money that we generate every year from our, the taxpayers, you know, would soak up a lot of this money if we used it for TIF money. But um, talking to Ann again, it's actually a pure grant from the state of Michigan. There's no TIF money used for this project. So we're not involved in it. We're going to administrate, help administrate it. Our council helped do that. Um, but it's purely tax rev, tax money from the state of Michigan to help fund this brownfield cleanup project. It's not TIF money. They can do TIF money. They can do loans. But this is a pure grant. So that helped me feel a little better about the project going forward. Jay. Um, so... Is this, is this one we're going to discuss this? Yeah. Okay. So what is our responsibility? Uh, it sounds like we're overseeing something. And what is our responsibility? What is our liability? And are any of our tax income and revenues being redirected from uh, to this group? Go ahead. Yeah. Actually, um, um, this is Dan Jameson again. Um, and if you... Sit in that chair, then you'll be on camera. Oh, okay. That's what I want. Sorry. <laughs> that was a purple, yeah, you know, like pla yeah. placement thing, right? Um, I don't know what I said back there. <laughs> <laughs> like back in the back. Um, so, how the grant program works is Renew Michigan um, grant directly um, funded by the state. It, it does not impact any of your taxing jurisdictions. Um, there's actually not even a brownfield plan written for this project. Um, typically, when we capture tax income and revenues, we have to put together a brownfield plan that allows for that brownfield, that specific eligible property, to.
to capture tax revenues from the various taxing jurisdictions, very similar to how your DDA does it, right? We would, if that was the case, we would enter the Brownfield Authority being, it would be going through Washtenaw County, essentially would enter into an interlocal agreement with the DDA. The DDA would forego the tax capture. The Brownfield Authority would capture it. That is not our scenario here. Our scenario here is a pure, straightforward grant. Um, essentially, the state of Michigan, e EGLE, the environmental agency, enters into an agreement with and contract with the Downtown Development Authority. That contract essentially allows for the disbursement of grant funds directly to the DDA, and then the DDA will then um, disperse those monies once approved. It's kind of a triple check um, process. So the eligible activities are incurred, which is in our case, soil removal of contaminated soil, source area contamination, and then um, installation of a vapor mitigation system in the building um, to prevent indoor air volatilization and protect the health and safety of the workers in that um, building itself. And so we have third party oversight, which I'll be working on um, to basically verify that the funds that are being spent are accurately being bid out um, that the um, process in which the uh, cleanup activities are being done is appropriate. Of course, I'm teaming with people. Um, and that, I, you know, I basically will review work plans that go in um, and help verify cost and then work with your folks at the DDA from the bookkeeping end of things so that because it's not just straightforward, it's just not like money in and out. We actually have to verify what those costs are, make sure they're the legitimate costs, make sure that they're tracking them appropriately, and that they're not like marking up things they shouldn't mark up. Um, and then once it goes through myself and then your um, administration, um, it then goes to Eagle before any funds are released. So then Eagle does a final check on all of our you know, draw requests, our quarterly reports, and then essentially they then disperse the money once everybody in their departments <laughs> have verified it. So in terms of are you out on a limb, you know, I mean, it's really a very solid um, triple check. Triple check. Yeah, the, yeah, so the biggest, um, you know, liability type thing, it would be on small increments, and that would be if you were to pay so that they submit their grant invoices and you pay them before I pay you would be the only time. And that would be if somehow something squeaked through the cracks with Ann and you guys where I, you know, they use the wrong IRS uh, mileage rate for their mileage. That, that's a common one we see. Um, but, you know, big dollar amounts, it's very hard to, you know, put the strain on the local unit of government. Yeah. And, and again, with the way we're going to process this, we're not going to ask the DDA to pay anything out to these consultants right. until it's been we disbursed the money right and verified by eagle so are you um, going to disperse the money directly to the project right so i have to so all of our grant loan everything has to go through a local unit of government so i have to disperse the money to the dda and then the dda would then in turn pay the consultant and all the parties involved and you set up like yeah, an electric fiduciary for the project but it's just a pass through from the state yep yeah and it's electronically transferred, so it's all set up where everything can be tracked internally. Audits, easily audited. I've run a couple of these programs for other municipalities throughout the state, and I've gone through probably five to eight audits over the last couple of years, um, and we've run into no problems at all. So. I'm just curious, how did you get on this project? Did you look for them? Did they contact you, the owner of the property? I was contacted there? by the owner of the property through a mutual, um, basically environmental consulting firm that I have teamed with in the past um, on other projects. They don't have the expertise in-house, so a lot of times folks solicit my services because of, it's a niche area um, of specialty, right. and yeah. So it's a done deal. I, I don't know. We will we'll vote on it. But pretty much. Well, as far as they're concerned, there's no more hoops. 
hurdles? So you already have the uh, initial grant of three hundred seventy thousand. That's already been you know contract signed everything. Mm -hmm. And then when we started our to prepare for the first you know set of work to start, we decided that you know it'd be, it'd be nice if we could put some more money at this and actually dig out the hot spots, which would you know limit the not limit the but. Uh, efficiency but uh, make it a little bit harder for the VI system to perform as well for as long. So we decided that if we could find the funding we would like to add additional funds to remove the hotspots and then it just so what happened. Are the hotspots? I saw that. <laughs> um, so the hotspots uh, would be you know areas of, of, of higher contamination that are yeah there's a lot of uh, TCE um, yeah solvents VOCs so we, term yep. term. Yeah, it's a general. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a general term. You know, spots. It's basically yep. where old septic fields were located yep. and where a wash station was located okay. outside. So where parts were being washed and or contaminants got down into you know the, the pipes and into an old septic that now is shut down and closed off, but there's still residual contamination there. And so when we were working with Eagle's specialty team, their VI team, which is also sort of fun, they have a new, um, it is good, it's good. They have this new special like VI team who works with all the environmental consultants so it can streamline the cleanup process and make sure that everybody's adequately performing the correct design and installation of these systems. So we've come quite a long way in the last, I'd say, Five to eight years. Yeah. 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 Huge strides in the last. So that said, all we're doing today is amending the current contract that we approved at last meeting to, you know, to add four hundred thousand dollars. That's coming from a state. Coming from a state. That's what it is right there. I hate to waste these people's time to come here. I think it's a no brainer. All right. So. I'll make a motion to approve the extra four hundred thousand dollars for the Brownfield Grant Amendment um, for the uh, the Holmes property. Got a second? We're just administering it. We're just administering. It. Question here on the one uh, the, the one picture shows a different building than the Holmes project here. In my understanding of it. There's multiple sites they own. So what you're looking at is the newest one they just acquired within the last three months, which is the subject of this grant. They have adjacent buildings that they own that they have other production facilities in. Yes. So this is this is an expansion of their existing operations. So the existing, the, the ones that you're familiar with is the brewery portion for the homes. Home. Pardon? To the south. Though. Yes, okay. correct, correct. The 78 Jackson Plaza? Is the That's new the, yep. development. Right. Yeah. This is the one we approved last meeting, Mark. I don't think you are here, but they, behind Sessions room there. Yeah. I thought that, I thought it was I thought the homes I thought that project was the second building south the second property south of of uh, session. It, it is. Well, it's right behind. It's right behind the session. This is this is the the entertainment production facility that has leasing whatever whoever has it now I don't know but this, the one that's highlighted here is is different than the so one. So was one approved for Homes Brewery already? No, this this is part of Homes Brewery. So. Holmes Brewery acquired the second building to do their production of smooch, which is a basically a seltzer smoothie type of alcoholic beverage. So it's part of their campus expansion. And we'll double check the map. I mean, so, so the initial one was for 350000 For which property? The, the smooch property. The smooch property. Yeah. Everything's associated oh, with smooch. So didn't ever have anything to do with their existing property. No. 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 Oh. It was all based on their new acquisition, and it was an incentive in order for them to be able to redevelop it because of the cost associated with cleaning up the brownfield conditions. So did I see somewhere in the, the here or here that part of it is putting in a restaurant and stuff or no? Um, no, it's to support their existing restaurant down the street. So, in, in yes. But it's bringing jobs to Sio Township, and that's part of the whole grant process, too, is Eagle 
typically won't support projects unless there's um, a significant need in terms of um, cleanup requirements and job creation is also a big factor. Yep. Yeah. Environmental conditions and the economic benefit and uh, social benefits we look at when we award grants. Social benefits. A couple of years here. Um, MLive did call me for a, an article on this, and they did run it. And they had two brownfield cleanups. They had one in Ann Arbor and me. I said, I said, talk to the owner. I said, the DD is boring. So he did call Tommy and talk to him. They did run an article in the MLive. I, th I think I forwarded it to everyone. It would have been last month, but it was interesting. He, he mostly talks about um, manufacturing a new product that I guess it's been on uh, some TV shows and some other things. It's, uh, it's very popular. Uh, one of those seltzer mixes, I think. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Any other questions on this? And again, Ann's going to stay after to kind of show us how to help with the accounting, but again, and we got like two CPAs, I think, here, so it's not going to be difficult for us, but. It's good to have, I just want a lot of eyes on it too, so that's good. Redundancy is good. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. But we also need to um, at least consider the proposal from Ann, or, or Ann, I, I know that you also have presented a proposal. Um, I did, yes, I sent to you, yes. Right, is that, does that need action today, or? Um, I was thinking you were going to put it on the agenda today. Yeah. I didn't see it. I thought I sent it to you. Is it in here today? I don't see it in the packet. That's what I was just looking for. Um, and what, what exactly was the proposal? To hire you on, on this? <laughs> yes, that was the objective that's, of the. That's what I figured. Yeah. Let me see if I can pull it up on my screen. So just so you're aware, I just want to be clear that the um, my fees are directly being taken from the grant. Yep. It is a requirement of the grant that there is a third party oversight to make sure that things are running smoothly and accurately. So Eagle sets aside funds for that, okay. as well yep. as separate funds for administration of the grant. So for some of your time that you'll be incurring related to the bookkeeping. Let's talk about your fees, right? Uh -huh. like, don't, don't, so again, are you, you're gonna charge fees on top of what you're getting from the grant? No. Okay. I do that. Good. So it's it's um, I I I sent um, the proposal. I, my hope was that it would, everyone would have a chance to look at it. But basically, that's that is the proposal from from Ian. Just to have you as a consultant it's, with us. Yeah, to work. And it's, fund, and it's funded. Well, it's not pro bono. It's funded. It's just not out of the DEA's funds. It's funded out of the grant funds from the state, and it's in the budget of the grant, right. right? Am I correct? That's absolutely correct. So in the line item, in Appendix A, if you refer to the packet, I believe it's Appendix A is in there. If it's not, I can explain it, and so can Holden. <laughs> um, essentially that... Um, this we, is $9,200, third-party environmental oversight professional. Yeah, that was from the previous amount. Yep. So it's been added to based on the increase in the grant amount. So, but yes, it's 5% of the overall grant. Um, Five percent for third party oversight and administration. Yep. So that's something we do not need to budget for. It's from the RPDA. Yeah. 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 It's correct. It's it's. Clear. But I I I thought it was something that the DDA board should be aware of and approve. Right. Um, and I think do we also probably need to vote to accept that agreement. Um, as, as part of moving forward with the grant, which is a little difficult to do since um, people haven't had a chance to actually look at the agreement, yeah. but it, it, you sort of understand the basic parameters of it, um, and basically, um, and so sort of would, would work together with um, Newton and um, the rest of us to make sure that we're filing all of the reports that we're supposed to file for. Um, and I'll give you more updates as to progress being made, and um, if you run into anything out of the ordinary, you know, I'm basically your representative um, that will help liaison you between the development team's environmental consulting team and um, EGLE, so that everybody is understanding how everything needs to flow. So does this need to be done well uh, soon? 
Uh, yeah, it's actually we need to do it contingent, uh, approve this contingent on Will and, and Bob. Well, over, overseeing it or anything like that, or in uh, the, ideally the uh, the sequence of events would be the DDA board would um, sort of approve this proposal and it would go to the township's board of trustees tomorrow night and it's in the meeting packet for the township board of trustees. That's what I'm getting at. Yeah. So uh, there is that. That was the intent. The intended sequence. So of, can of we approve? Can we legit? Can we approve that? Um, you can approve it contingent on the board of trustees right. um, um, approving it tomorrow. Are we allowed to do that? Is the question. I think so. I think so too. So we'll we'll vote to approve it contingent on the. Board of Trustees. It's a, 90, it's a ninety-five hundred dollar fee. Yeah, out of the grant, though. Right. But so it's the five five percent of the grant. Like I told the writer for Emily, I want all the money going to the develop. You know, the Tommy and the project. You know, so. Mm -hmm. I, but having these extra contingencies is good. It's a requirement. So it's it's five five percent. It is. It, it is, it is a requirement. There. Yeah, it's, it's, it's bigger now. Guys, what's that? From e it's, yeah. It's a, okay. yeah. We yeah we have. Multiple site projects that have third-party oversight just to, just depends on what the project is and you know, kind of the complexity of it. Um, it's more common with our VI sites, which this one is, and when you have multiple moving parts, it is a lot. It makes it more streamlined, especially from a local unit to government standpoint. I move that Sour Township DDA approve the ninety-five hundred dollar fee. It's I think five percent of five per, probably five percent fee uh, to be taken from the grant from the from Eagle. Second. Second. Uh, oh, we're gonna make that oh. contingent on the approval by the Silo Township trustees. Board of trustees. Thanks. Which is automatic. We got you. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. It's good. Great project. Okay. I just want to note as well that with our grants, we try and make sure that the local unit government's whole the whole time. So there shouldn't be anything out of your pocket. So her fee is built into the grant as well as any administration time from the DDA used to, you know, process court reports or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Hourly, you know, as, as long as it's a detailed build, you can actually build the grant for that as well. And the sign. And, yeah, the we sign. Need, we need that bill. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we saw that administrative fees in there to charge so Thank you. Great project. All right. How are we doing on uh, Mark? I think Mark is present. Let me just pull up the screen here and see. Mark, where is Mark? Matt. I mean, Matt, not Mark. Matt. Um, oh, Matt, yeah, sorry. Well, there is a Mark who works there, too. But... Yes. So, Matt. Hello. Hello. So we're going to go back up to new business A, and again, there should be some information in your packets too that we sent you before, but it's about five pages in, there's kind of an agreement summary, the estimated cost of the project itself. So again, uh, Washington Road Commission, I'll, I'll let um, Matt here in a minute explain it better than I can, but in a gist. Washington Road Commission is asking us to help, or actually the side of the help, with uh, some culverts underneath the roads that are, that are damaged and possibly decaying. Um, I drove by, by there, I was looking for a road project with signs and lights and everything, and the roads were fine, and I couldn't figure out where those were. But after driving around a second time, you can see there's some culverts that help direct the water um, back down. I think they're on the cold side of the road, but uh, Matt will get into that in a little more detail. Go ahead, Matt. Thanks for thanks for coming today. Yeah, no problem. Sorry for the confusion. So, we had proposed through the local road program, the township that we look at funding the replacement or rehabilitation of two culverts, um, one on Parkland Plaza, one on Little Lake. Both are in poor condition. Uh, we typically work with the township and provide them uh, just a list of needs, infrastructure needs on local roads. As per the state, we can't uh, fully fund a project 
we can go 50-50 with, a, with another participant for local roads uh, for above normal maintenance, and this would definitely qualify. Um, South Township has a long history of investment and in infrastructure, and we appreciate that partnership. And we looked at all the needs, and this was certainly at the top of the list, looking at both roadways rely on that access um, for health, safety, and welfare and access to the belt businesses. There's really only one way in and one way out on Parkland Plaza accessing uh, Park and Jackson. So if these culverts were to fail or if we had to close the road uh, due to the condition of the culverts, uh, that would certainly impact all those businesses that use those roadways and residents as well. So that's why we made this one certainly a priority. In fact, instead of replacement, we looked at what it would cost to line the culverts and we got a cost proposal and we shared that with the township. Uh, that's what's before you today. And uh, approximately probably double the cost is for replacement. So it's significant. They're rather large culverts. We certainly want to look at rehabilitation. Uh, that way we don't have to get into um, resizing uh, for eagle permitting. Uh, we can rehabilitate without uh, having to upsize the, the culverts. So just trying to extend the service life of these culverts and uh, provide a cost-effective solution for this uh, local road issue. When were the original culverts put in there? Probably during the construction of the, the subdivision or the, the corporate park. 73, 74. 73, 74. So they are, they are older than I thought. Yeah, 50 years. So you got like a culvert inspector? You got someone that goes around and looks at all these? I mean, so why part of, go ahead. Asset management, what we've done at the Road Commission is we've made the commitment to inspect our culverts between the size of five feet and 20 feet. And uh, we went ahead and did that. Uh, we do that now on a recurring cycle um, every four to five years. And then if they're in poor condition, we try and look at them every year. Um, we are required by law to inspect bridges every two years. And then if it's uh, condition on the bridge is poor condition, then we have to look at it every year so we sort of model it after that question any, any chance that those culverts one or both those culverts may have to be increased in size in the short long term no i think by catching it now we're able to rehabilitate them by lining them with another pipe inside and it'll provide a really uh, good solution for half the cost of replacement and extend that service life 20 years and beyond. I mean, no floodplain adjustments coming or, um, no. or changes in the, okay. So is there the location of them? Are, are they on, one's on the U of M side and the other one's over by the apartments on the other side, I think. Right. right. Yep. So there's two of them there. Okay. Yeah. It's the same water course. There's not four. There's just, there's two that need it. There's not Correct. other ones. So these There's are the many in the township, but not on right. these roads. Right. But, um, are, are we talking about the same intersection? I mean, it's the it's little it's north of where the U of M yeah. facility it's north is. Of Arbor, really. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Or no, what's it called? Arbor beverage. Beverage. Yeah. Any other questions for Matt? While we got him on here, uh, I I don't know who this question is for, but. Um, is there some reason that this isn't going to be paid for out of the township wide SAD or um, the DDA share of the township wide SAD? Yeah, I thought we'd get into that after we had okay. that on here. Thanks, Matt. It's not, it's not really a question for Matt. Yeah. But, Matt, um, one question um, that has come up with regard to these culverts, and I think it's because the culverts came to the township as a um, standalone project rather than as part of a roads project 
um, is, um, you know, is this sort of an unusual sort of new thing for the township to pay for? And um, you and I talked about this. I was just wondering if you could sort of, you know, um, share what you shared with me when we talked, and that is, was about how the township has paid for culvert repair or, or maintenance or replacement, um, but has done so in the past as part of a larger road project. Is um, Maybe you could sort of... Sure. I also, do you see my screen I'm sharing now? Yeah. So this is where the uh, culvert, you can see the water course, the blue line, squiggly line is the water course, there's a wetland area here. So you've got one culvert on Little Lake here, one culvert on Parkland Plaza here, and then as I turn on the aerial, kind of gives you a, a feel for the U of M facilities right here. So if these were to be closed or cut off, it would cut off everyone to the south of that water course, because there's not a, another means of access to to those facilities. So um, getting to the point of the supervisor's question, um, a lot of local road projects have been done in the course of time with the township and it's been inclusive of culverts within those road projects. Uh, we have taken a um, higher level view with our asset management with culverts and so We've provided the township a, a status and condition of map of our local road culverts, and it's been included in the local road program. Our local road program is a matching program where there's X dollars available for the township to match. In addition to that program, we will match 50-50 with any culvert replacement. So that's been part of the local road program for a very long time. Um, it's just not been the experience in SIO where we've done specific culvert projects. We have done that on numerous other townships, uh, just not in SIO. Mainly the culvert replacements in SIO have been done in cooperation with a local road improvement project. Sorry. So they've been sort of folded into a larger project. Yeah. DDA paid for about $600,000 to have a box culvert expand uh, by Jackson Industrial Drive by Lowe's because, it need, because they changed, that's why I asked that question because they changed the, the elevation of the flood zone and if we didn't increase it, basically behind that culvert may flood. And yeah, and that, that was included was in the expansion of the Jackson Road. It was more of a replacement is the way we Yeah, did. and we were... We were adding a lot of impervious area with the new roadway as well, so that makes sense. In this case, we're not doing any expansion of the existing infrastructure. So we're just replacing uh, a culvert that are at the end of their service life. So no new floodplain delineations coming upstream from those? Like that's we're not planning happened. to do anything that's but rehabilitation. When you're, when you're doing major infrastructure projects like Jackson Road, they're going to review that as part of their uh, overall permit for the project. But in this case, it, it's merely rehabilitating existing culverts. So the I don't- Water Resource think, Commission doesn't have anything going on as far as floodplain delineation adjustments or anything like that? Not that I'm aware of. That's out of my jurisdiction. I don't, I don't ask for those things to go on. And I only am trying to manage the infrastructure we're in charge of. Thank you. Any other questions, Any questions? For, for, for Matt in terms of the, the nature of the project? Thanks, Matt, for your time. Thank, thanks, Thank Matt. You. Thank you. Know, you. If we need, if we got any more questions. All right, sounds good. Have a good rest of your meeting. Sorry, I, I missed oh, the first good. part. Thank you. So again, what's before us is to assist with this project. We would pay half. It's about one hundred fifty thousand dollars. No, one hundred and two. One hundred two thousand five. Um, but again, like our guest said, the question, and some of us have talked about this before, you know, is this really a DDA project to pay for? Why isn't Sile Township's maintenance program paying for this? You know, it seems like, it seems like, uh, you know, recently there's been some changes and, and the DDA's funding is, you know, if it is in the DDA, they, they are looking for us to help with it. We, we did, we were financially responsible. We saved a lot of money because we thought we were going to pave uh, Jackson farther down, so we have some assets. Um, so, 
the question is, again, is it is it within our right to help pay for this? That's that's why I brought up the point of of will do you know offhand what our our share of the uh, in other words our our uh, um, the SAD the township wide SAD for roads we get some every year correct correct the EDA gets a share of that correct because I think because isn't that what we use to do the to repair the because that those funds can be used for repairs. Either yes, we, I think we use those. I don't to, know to I don't fix mean, the caulking and the expansion joints along Jackson Road. I, yeah, I don't know what's if there's like a a pot of <laughs> of uh, uh, SAD funds that are is sort of sitting in the DDA's budget. I don't know what the what that amount is. I don't think we have a separate pot for that because again, some of the projects we did before we paid fifty fifty for it. And we got some of the money back from the property owners, and then the SILO actually put that in a different category. That was about 10 years ago. So if the cover collapses, it becomes an improvement. And if we fix it, it's considered maintenance. But therefore, I consider it an improvement. Yeah, I mean, again, I function of the area, it has to be done. It's 50 years old. I thought they were just looking for projects to do. It's not like it's 10 years old or something. So it's 50 years old. You know, again, I think one of the main things we do is to help infrastructure in the DDA, and it's definitely infrastructure. I mean, you don't see you don't see like a road that needs to be done or something, you know, above ground that needs to be fixed, but it's just as important. It, here, um, I, and I, I, I want to respond to to the public comments at the beginning of the meeting. Um, I think the question that um, has been raised um, is sort of a you know, in some ways, a larger question. Um, you know, the DDA in the past, um, even as recently as um, just, I don't know, last spring, um, approved contributing towards um, road improvements, towards um, the Enterprise Drive projects is what I'm thinking of. Um, but um, an infrastructure project where um, it's an existing piece of infrastructure that needs to have something done to it so that it remains useful. Now, is that maintenance is that an improvement I think in some ways it's that's a good question and that, that seems to be the larger question that people have raised and my impression is that the DDA has a long history of investing in those kinds of projects capital assets yeah so so that's that's where I think that's really the question is like how are we viewing these culverts you know, in that context, in the context of the DDA's, you know, practice of investing in those kinds of projects. This is this is sort of a variation on that theme. Well, that's what we were trying to figure out what our purpose is and where we should put our efforts. Yeah, and, we're, we're, and where do we pick and choose which roads get, get done that. or which culverts get done? We're about seven minutes ahead of everything, but that's where it Jennifer and I talked point. a lot about that, so we'll get into that too. But I think the callers too just they see Sile's trustees as running the maintenance for the for Sile, and if, if if your maintenance fund is smaller, they don't want the DDA to pay for those for, for those mistakes. So I think there's a little bit of uh, management questions, which is normal, and then uh, what's the purpose of the DDA to pay for these things? So, but again, we have done these in the past, and, and it is part of the road. You know, we're looking. You know, I, I, I'm all about infrastructure. I want to fix some of these other roads that are down because it's going to attract business. It's going to raise revenue for the area. It's going to make our community healthier. So I see that as a as a viable part of what the DA can do. What's holding you back, Jay? What's the pondering? <laughs> you just see the wheels turning. <laughs> I, I I see that the um, you know when we talk about repaving, that's a capital improvement. And we're about capital improvements. We're not talking about like doing a light coating. We're talking about ripping up pavement and repaving in most cases because it's beyond its life expectancy and therefore it becomes a capital improvement as opposed to, you know, and a replacement is a capital improvement. And that's the way I look at it. I don't like the fact that the road commission comes with their hand out, you know, and says, hey, we're not going to like the boulevard. We're not going to maintain your boulevard. We want you to maintain the boulevard. Oh, wait, 
what? You know, I mean, we built the boulevard. Um, that was a capital improvement. Uh, but at the same time, there was, there was an improved road there before. So we replaced the road with a much better road. And so when I start thinking, you know, how are they, how are they the same? What box do they fit in? That's kind of how I look at it. So it's, and that's why I'm kind of wrestling with it. I don't like that. I agree. I think this is, this is very, I mean, what you're articulating, Jay, is, is what I've heard from people in, in different contexts in terms of roads in particular, and that is, how come the Roads Commission doesn't do that? How come that's not part of their job? And um, and that was, you know, I would have assumed the same thing. Um, I um, it, uh, had a presentation from the Roads Commission, where it's, it's called uh, Roads 101, I think, um, where it was explained to me, and I've actually seen this a couple times now, um, that they're constrained um, not only by the sort of lack of funding that they have, uh, the limited funding they have, and the you know, sort of broad scope of roads for which they're responsible, um, but they're also constrained by law. I think it's Act 51 is the one that, that has been cited to me, um, that says that they can only pay for half of the cost, up to half of the cost of a road project. So they have to find other partners. And in, in, in this case, they're tur turning to the township and saying, well, this is a township, piece of township infrastructure. Um, I mean, you know, the DDA could pay for it, the township could pay for it, that it being the, the half, the match that the road commission needs, or it could come from some other source. I mean, we could do an SAD um, and, and go to all of the properties that are, are, would be directly impacted if the culverts failed. Um, in this instance, that seemed to be kind of an uh, uh, unwieldy approach to me, anyway. <laughs> Um, what other what other projects what other projects have they paid half of? Well, their their annual as far as you know the, the projects that we've done they haven't paid anything. As far as well, at, actually, the Enterprise Drive project includes a contribution from the, the sort of annual the new one allocation from the road commission as part of the the sort of agreement that the township reached for local road improvements, and that agreement always comes with a certain set amount of funding that the Road Commission is offering. And it's not necessarily 50%. Um, it's sort of, here's, here's how much, you know, will match. The Road Commission is saying, here's a list of projects. You choose, you township, choose from this list of projects, but this is the amount that we'll match up to. So that's, so the Enterprise Drive project includes that funding for this fiscal year from the Road Commission. This actually is coming from a separate fund. Um, Matt didn't, I don't know if Matt explained that, but this is sort of a separate fund that the Road Commission has. And so in some ways, this is a sort of an opportunity. Kind of a bonus. Yeah, it's kind of a bonus for the township to um, match, you know, to get a 50% match on a project. So it's actually in some ways kind of a, a better deal than they offer with that, um, that list of, of projects. So again, we would pay half of it. Um, it is it is an up, it's, it's a separate fund that we could take advantage of. You know, and I think I think it is part of the, what the DDA is, is uh, supposed to do. Now, again, you know, do we, are we are we paying for this because there's you know some other things that the trustees can do? That's not really our. You know, that's not in our realm. But um, I'm in favor of this project. I, I would I would say with that, you know, we don't want to be the the go to, you know, funding for a lot of these projects that should be maintenance. But I think it's a capital improvement. It's 50 years old. Someone called it called you the, the township's piggy bank. I, I I agree. We don't want to treat the DDA yes, that way. Exactly. Uh, my big thing is, as a foundational level, what are we responsible? for? defining it. What is the road commission responsible for? What are the trustees responsible to approve? What do we what do we support, influence, or actually own? And you know, maybe it's a we need to figure that out. Is this an exception just for now to get it 
because we have to. I thought we did that already with Enterprise. That was a quick hit. We get as much money we're going to do it. And you know, we've done an April Drive. We've done, we've done these side roads historically since the DDA started. Some of them were done with SADs. Yeah, some part, yeah, they were. This, this, this is partial SADs. Yeah. As yeah, they're April, all funded April differently. Was, April was all projects were funded partial SAD. This is another side road off of, I mean, you could look at it that way. It's, it's part have, of you know, side road projects. We have some maintenance fund money that the, that the township holds for us. Well, how much is it? What do we have to? Uh, I was a question. It's four hundred thousand dollars, maybe. If, you know, I just uh, just guessing. And we have. I mean, it might be more than that because it came from the sale of lots that the SA. There were certain captures. There were certain uh, lots that were, as opposed to going to court and fighting uh, in court uh, when the boulevard was built. There were certain lots that were considered. Uh, complete takings, and so we pay the amount for the complete taking, but then you know, the building be torn down or whatever. And when that, that was sold, that money didn't necessarily have to go back into the DDA because because we couldn't own it, the township owned it. So when the township sold those, that went into a, a maintenance fund intended for the boulevard. Now whether that's whether that's been siphoned off or robbed, I don't know. Um, it should still be there. Um, but we also have one lot on the corner of Stabler and Jackson that's, that's still for sale, I assume. Um, but again, that lot is that sile. It's not, it's it's not owned by the DDA. Yeah. Listen, I, hear. I don't know. It's a, a realtor approached um, the township. And this, so this, I'm learning the, another piece of the story from your, your description, Jay, because a realtor approached the township and said, hey, there's this piece of land you own at Stabler and Jackson. You know, are, you ready to, so are you ready to sell it? And I was like, what? <laughs> it, it had been listed for a while, but the, the, the parcel, one of the parcels was uh, next to where our nets used to be, mm -hmm. where that was, we sold it to uh, Fox Auto. Fox, I think, yeah. Um, and I think that sold, I think that yeah, was three or four hundred dollars. Well, there's these mystery parcels. And that, there was another one, I'm trying to remember what the other one was, but there was another one that was, that was sold. Well, when I, when I first came into office, I had this tutorial from the assessor showing me all of the land in Sio Township that was, uh, you know, that the township was responsible for. And these parcels along Jackson weren't part of that presentation. I, they sort of got overlooked, I guess. But there's other parcels too, and, and they keep sort of popping up. I think we really need to do an inventory of all of these sort of forgotten pieces of land along Jackson. There, there, there's a stretch um, near the Carsmetology um, business. Cool where there's a, a bunch of these little parcels that came to be owned by the township and nobody has been taking care of them. Well, allegedly owned by the township. The, actually, the, the title is still held by the road commission. Um, but recently, um, a resident approached the township and said, who's responsible for maintenance uh, along this stretch of sidewalk? Because it's impassable and because of all the overgrowth. and." Um, so we did some investigating and, de and determined that there's, it's like you were describing, these parcels that came into being as a result of the Jackson Road Boulevard improvement years ago, and, and now they're sort of forgotten. Um, we cleared the so sidewalk, by the way, so it's passable again. Between the power lines and that, is that what you're talking about? I think about? so, yeah, yeah, it's down near where the um, utility easement crosses Jackson. Good. So back to the culverts. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> well, so the question is, you know, when we talked about a pot of money, there may be a pot of money that we can connect. And that's what, you know, again, we, we have saved some money because, because of the future projects. So we do have some assets that we can use. Um, we got plenty of money to pay the bonds every year, which we are obligated to do, which we've done, you know, uh, perfectly. Uh, so I, I see this as a project that we can help with. It's a matching funds. And I, and again, when I got in this water, I wasn't naive. I thought Washington Road Commission paid for roads, but they need partners. They don't have as much assets as you think. So um, this is the way that and every every project that we've looked at, it's different funding for every every situation. So just remember that they do charge us engineering and supervision. So they they're also getting well, paid. they're getting no, paid. it's a it's a revenue for them. There's no question about that. But Jennifer, you raised a really good question about. You know, it's sort of a, a larger question, and um, 
I had a conversation with uh, someone recently where um, they raised the same question. And I, I think um, the newly constituted, um, reconstituted Roads Advisory Committee that we're, uh, we have, actually the Township Board will be appointing people to uh, tomorrow night. Um, part of their charge is to look at these, all of these projects that come to uh, the Township from the Road Commission, including culverts, um, and to you know, sort of evaluate them and help the Township sort of plan ahead for them better than um, we've been doing recently. And um, that way they can be budgeted for, um, and whether the Township and the DEA choose going forward to partner on, on these kinds of projects, I think that's a really good question. Um, I think, you know, my sense is the DDA in the past and the township have partnered on projects, uh, road projects along the Jackson Road corridor. Um, and I would assume that, cul you know, if there's culverts, if there's additional culverts in that DDA um, territory, mm -hmm. uh, that they would be evaluated as part of that effort. And this isn't, this isn't replacement, what I heard was repair. Correct. They're going to go put new pipes on the inside or something. Put a new pipe in line the line. It's kind of like replacing in place. Right. <laughs> cool. I thought they were newer than 50 years is old. I thought they were newer than that. I'm over 50. <laughs> <laughs> you, need, you need to be real. <laughs> this part's probably coming in the future. Uh, any other questions on the culverts? Well, I just have a question. That, that should we suggest that we take this from our capture from the um, township uh, wide SAD and the balance be paid out of our funds. And going forward, you know, again, we did some that SAD for, I don't know if it was uh, April Drive or one of them over there, and we captured some money, $150,000. There should be some other funds sitting there for us to use for those for these projects. If we so don't, that's so. what the by right. commission will come to get that. Right. We gotta dig into it a little more. If we don't use it, they'll come to get it. I think we do. I would I would I obviously that would be the first thing we try to use is the money that we had set aside for the these separate projects. I think what you're referring to is what has was described to me as the revolving fund. No, we, no. We did we did the S A D and then we, we got money back from from the business owners on the street and then people drive. Right. And then the then it went into the maintenance fund. Yeah, did, right. right. So that's how that maintenance fund's been built. That and the sale of lots. That's, it, it, Sandy could kind of explain it. Yeah, yeah. If, if Sandy were with with, were with us at the meeting today, she would, I'm sure, have all these answers at her fingertips. True. Because it's kind of cloudy. I don't know. Um, I think we do have Rebecca with us, but I don't know if, if she's in a position to answer those questions. Why can't I? If I have two, oh, here we go. I don't know how that happened. Um, let me see. Why? Here we go. Now, Rebecca, I'm going to see if I can bring you in. I don't know. Rebecca, are you, are you there? Do you want to? Way in. Is she down the hall? I am sorry. I missed the question because I'm on the phone with the township right now, working oh. on another question. <laughs> sorry, you are you are evidently the go-to person of the moment. Um, we so there's questions that have been raised about um, what DDA funds are available um, that might be used uh, to help pay for the uh, the share of the uh, culvert project. Yeah. Maybe, Jay, maybe you can articulate the question. I, I'm taking the phone call because now she's talking to somebody else or whatever. Oh. Our understanding is there's some funds. In Didn't work yet. Oh. That there's some funds in a maintenance. Yeah, I, I can tell her that she's. Uh, um, I'd have to look into it figure. off the top of my head. I don't like, know right now. Stop. Oh, else is unmuted. Boy, check. That's probably my husband. Oh, okay. <laughs> he's, he's talking about the township office right now for me. So. 
All right, that's exactly why I'm coming to look into it. I think that would be the preferred method would be to use that maintenance fund. Good. Okay, so to use the maintenance fund, maintenance funds first. Well, to use to use our capture first, to use the capture from the township wide SAD for roads. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. I, I remember that. So first, to use the capture from the township SAD, the DDA's capture, mm -hmm. um, and then after that, a maintenance fund. Can I do that? Or you want yeah. To So move. So we have a proposal. So we'll use for 102,000, I think, again. 1025. 1025 to assist uh, Washington Road Commission to get matching funds for the culverts. And we'll use uh, the township um, SAD fund for roads first, and then our maintenance fund second. And then we're going to dig deep into, uh, after this, the funds, if they are still separate for some projects that we've done in the past. Any other questions? Do we get a second? Uh, second. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? All right, motion passes. Thank you. All right. Next new business, increase the annual budget. I thought we did this before. Let me see. But Will just wanted to make sure that we did. I did? Yeah. You did. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, let's see if Rebecca's still here. So it's increased. But again, we, we approved the you know, proposed budget as is. It was a little bit, it wasn't much of an increase. <laughs> From uh, all right. So I'm not sure what it was that uh, here's the, the there's a, referring again, to again the documents that were emailed this morning. Rebecca did over the weekend, which is very nice. It shows an amended budget for 2021-22. Page one, it says revenue expen expenditure report for Silo Township on the top. So somebody want to give us a synopsis of what we're doing? I'm a, I'm a li I confess I'm a little unclear. Again, I thought we did this with Sandy before, but you, you said we still need to amend it. Oh, so. oh, oh, I think I know where the confusion came from. I, so I noticed, um, in a, um, let me get out of the screen here. Um, I I noticed in a document um, that Sandy provided for the July meeting that there was a notation about the need for a budget amendment, and I assumed that that referred to the DDA budget, um, and I am not sure that actually that okay. I interpreted that correctly. Right. Um, it may have been that it was um, a notation um, that there's a need for the township board of trustees to make a budget amendment. So a different and yeah, so I I, I, I was just sort of flagging that to your attention, Bob. I'm sorry if I uh, right. if I that came across as like I we did is is doing something to the DDA's budget. It it may or may not be the DDA's budget that needs amending and I you know obviously with Sandy Epps um, for health reasons I'm, I'm not in a position to ask her for clarification right so I, I just say we table this until next meeting um, and we're gonna go through the financials in a little while anyways but I, I agree with that I have a question though uh, we got this sheet just in front of the budget that says summer 2021 summer taxes yeah and it shows it uh, in transit not shown yeah, Rebecca put that together. I've never seen that report either. So the my question on that is, are there any, what we refer to as split backs to be taken out of that? So 
Well, I think, again, that money and transfer was just a deposit made, um, and that wasn't showing up on the August bank statement yet. So sometimes when there, when money comes in, we don't really, it's not really our money, and we have to pay it back to No, we're, we're doing that different now, so you're getting 50% at the beginning. We're not doing split backs anymore. We're done with those, okay, with those Correct. Parts. Okay. So everything that goes in, we're not paying out, so that's the DBA's, or the community's, obviously, assets to use. And you're right, this is a new report I did for you guys, just yeah. to see what you're expecting. Thank you. All right. Good. So we'll, we'll if there's any budget issues to, to correct, we'll do that next meeting, but I don't think there is. So for our next meeting, do we want to have Rebecca? Yeah, I'll get, we'll get some other reports printed up. Well, it's possible by the next meeting, Sandy will be back. Okay. Because we meet every two months, right? Yep. Okay. We could uh, meet more often if you prefer, Jay. The next meeting is uh, November 8th. We were, you know, with the, with the road project, we were meeting monthly then, and then we, everybody kind of took a break because that big project and... Well, yeah. I mean, we may be back. See, my, my point: we may be back there if we, because if we descend, decide to take on a bigger project, we would need to yeah. extend the DVA, and that would take some work. Well, that's that's those are gonna that's gonna happen. Well, then we need to talk about hiring a yeah. consultant to help us with that or something. True. Yeah. Because if we're gonna do north, if we're thinking about doing North Zebra Corridor, yeah. Because it's gonna take again, so if we were to issue bonds, twenty years. The, we have to extend the DDA to pay for that's those. That's 2029, yeah. Right. Well, any, any, for any reason, if yeah. the DDA um, were to issue more bonds, I think the word that you had, Bob, is that um, we yeah, wish that we, the DDA's um, term would have to be extended. Okay, before we did that. Whatever, for whatever reason, the bonds might be issued. Okay. Any other questions on the new business items? Discussion items. We can get into the financial report now. Well, um, did we, do, you, do we need to talk about the um, the DDA master plan? I thought you guys well, were. That's an old business. I'm just reading down here. That's oh, I see. Oh, I'm business. sorry. I, I thought that was going to come up with discussion items. Yeah. No, right. right. Sorry. Forget it. All right. I don't think there's uh, any checks that have to be issued. Was there any checks in there? Washington Engineering. Oh yeah, there's one check for Washington Engineering. So are there we questions? Did do, we did do that Eagle sign. Not one five hundred dollars, but we did do. We got a couple of quotes for that. But, but we'll, we'll talk about that later. So looking at just the the one bill to approve to Washington Engineering, which actually I don't know why they have. I think I got it in an old discussion. I was a bus shelter. So again, we're we're waiting for title searches on the property um, to be done before. So I told. Who's doing those? It's um, waiting. There's some attorneys involved. I should explain that. So we're, <laughs> so we're trying to get the uh, titles done, and then we should be able to start the construction. But I said, let's get these done before the snow flies. It's been almost eight months, so. You know, we have so, storage. They're asking us to get those out. My experience is that title searches are done by title companies. And well, we hire a title company to do it, yeah. But as opposed to hiring an attorney and doing the old-fashioned way of doing it. Well, that's so what the our attorney said to uh, <coughs> do a title search. And so I think Myers old Myers. I don't think they moved down to a title company then from there. Uh, again, there was some quotes done. And the cost was a little more than our attorney would like to pay, so we questioned that. So. It's not done yet, but it's in process. It's just taking a longer time than I. So who's Jake? Do, do we know? Who's, do you know who's doing those? Or? Well, I checked with a title company in Silo Township. And that price was a lie. It was absolute title yeah. company. Yeah. He didn't like that, so he's, he said he's got some some other title companies. So. But, but we have the contractor, so once we get the, once we get approved for the title, it should go pretty quickly. Um, these bus shelters. So this check that we've got to approve is for that. 
Washington, which was already in the agreement that we signed. Seems like three years ago. But any questions on this check? Anything else in the financials? So we need a motion to approve the financials, yeah. including the payment of bills, right? Correct. Motion to approve. Got a second. Second, Mark. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Motion passes. Thanks. All right. So now, um, Jennifer and I have been having a, quite a few talks and conversations, and she's doing a lot more research than I am, but um, looking at the, the DDA's master plan, which hasn't been updated since 2006, which looking at other DDA's, they haven't either. Some of them amended bring it up, but we should, we should uh, bring it up, but it falls in line exactly what you guys are talking about. What's the purpose of the DDA? What are we going to do? And um, uh, we, there's some great other DDAs out there with some some ideas that we kind of looked at, but um, I don't think we're going to do a master plan that's 180 pages long like Wills in Silo Township. If you looked at it, it's a great plan, but it's, it's, it's extremely long. I, I appreciate that credit, but it's not... Um... Well, I don't know who did it. <laughs> They spent a lot of time a on committee. it. Committee. Yeah. Yeah, it's a committee. It's certainly not, exactly. it's certainly it's not just pages me. pages long, the master plan. <laughs> so, and again, Jessica's background, strategic planner, you know, does this for a living. So it's really, it's excellent to have her on the board. And this is a perfect um, plan to go into. So we're, we're going to talk about it. We're, it's, it's not going to be finalized yet. But, um, again, uh, I'll turn over to Jennifer to explain it. Um, so our, to make it quick, the big thing is, is what are we responsible for? And in looking through ours and looking through the 180 pages and looking through other um, townships, we kind of came into three arenas. The keeping the DDA area safe and attractive, right? Some, you know, level of infrastructure there to support that. Another bucket was to drive new business relationships. And so that is expanding businesses, rejuvenating, reinvestment, um, and I don't know, possibly supporting. And that's where the whole influence, owning, what do we actually do um, comes into to play. And then the third one was to create a place of community. Because right now, as my dad would call it, was a sleeper community. I'm not quite sure what he means by that. We didn't go into conversation, but that's what he, he says. He's, he was a part of this a long, long, long time ago. So we thought those were good, three good buckets because it kind of summarized what was already in the past one, but it also gives us a chance to clean up and either remove, right, or kind of reinvigorate what we're responsible for and what we do. And then the other element was really roles and responsibilities. So what do we own? You know, what are we actually responsible to execute? What are we responsible to influence? And what do we just get involved in on the side? And, and there's a a plethora, a whole list in the past plan of what we, what, stuff that was in there that I just have a bunch of question marks around. And so the, I think we can work offline creating a better draft for you all to, to review and provide some input on. Um, but then also including what we want to do over the next couple of years, where do we want to be in, you know, 15, 20 years, um, and get some more, I wouldn't call it super detailed on it. Uh, but just some outlines, again, that impact those three buckets of activity. And if they don't fall in that bucket of activity, hopefully in a year when someone asks us for money, we can say, does it hit these three items? And if the answer is no, maybe the answer will continue to be no. And if the answer is yes, or we think, then it's a conversation. But we don't have to have this back and forth. And is that us? Is it someone else? Are we the saviors all the time just because we have money we're responsible for, you know? Sometimes it's probably going to be that, um, but hopefully we can better define it so people know what we're responsible for. Now, I would argue that if we're not responsible for it, who is, right? Is that fully defined? So when someone comes to us and it's not us, we can say, go to the road commission, go to the board of trustees, go down the street. I live in fantasy land sometimes where I like to have that kind of definition because it makes running businesses very easy. Um, but <laughs> can we try and implement, you know? A little bit of rainbows and unicorns here. <laughs> so that's what we're working towards. So if there's thoughts. Basic flow chart. Oh, man. Love it. 
<laughs> about halfway through the packet, it's, uh, there's some, a page highlighted yellow. Good questions, Jennifer King. And I've emailed this to you guys for the last you know, six months, so hopefully you read it. Yeah, so I think cause a lot of the questions is, what does this actually mean? Encourage public and private partnerships, or um, another one was like, encourage pedestrian non-motorized public transportation improvement in conjunction with private development projects. Is that us? You know, if it falls into the DDA, maybe, but does it actually happen? I don't know. I haven't been around long enough, so. I already have already are. Yeah. Um, so encouraging energy efficiency and efficiency in all proposals. Is that us or is that the planning? You know, people. Right. These are all questions. That, that's there's a whole committee dealing with that. Now. Yeah. Right. So then we can wipe it from ours. And that's what we talked about. Is this really planning? Is this our? Is this in our swim lane? You know, some things aren't. Some are more planning commission than ours. So, well, I think from a standpoint of whether we, to the degree we support some of those things. Yeah. Support. In other words, are they, are they, are they directed towards the the uh, DDA? district or they directed to others mm -hmm. and yeah anyway. these are the questions should be well do you want to get into these questions now or yeah. I, or do we, it's 1 30 do you want to do you want to we have some time okay um so i'll go through the highlighted ones is that yeah so and again, we're gathering more information. We'll yeah. put together a draft. Again, it's not finalized. I think we're going to revert back to the 180-page um, master plan of SIL if we can see page X. It would be helpful to refer this to a committee and just have, since we have nine people on, on DDA, correct? Yeah, if, if it takes five for a quorum. Um, I would assume that four of us can be in this, this committee without breaking rules of the Local Meetings Act and sit down and some of this stuff it's five yeah. yeah so you yeah so you can have up to less than a quorum. yeah you can have less than a quorum me um, to work on anything you know that we wanted to do in a subcommittee uh, without causing a problem in terms of open meetings I, I think that might be it right um, to get down yeah around the table with right knock it out knock it out that's yep. good that's all I was wondering about a few of us could help Get the draft together because right now it's you two, yeah. For, yeah. yeah. Which is right, uh, and we haven't done anything, we just highlighted which is really, it. Yeah, I just asked I have a thousand question marks. Well, Jay, if you were willing to participate, that I would be great. Participate because I'd build on sustainability, okay. Well, you could also answer questions like, you know, what things fall within the jurisdiction of the or planning commission call. or whatever. Yes. Yeah. You could be our yes. historian. <laughs> if I know who to call, this is a true historian, <laughs> <laughs> like, like who was there when they. Started, you know, he's still around, so but okay, yeah. You want to you want to look at these questions now? A few of them, do you want to do you want to do this later? It's totally up to you guys. I, I just wanted to just see what Jennifer's been working on, and putting it yeah, together. Yeah. Well, these are really good questions. I mean, that one about um, energy efficiency and proposals. I mean, I can you know, yes, those are coming through the planning commission, and they are definitely. That's the point at which the township can ask whoever's doing whatever the you know the development is to include those kinds of elements, and certainly if we wanted to change the zoning to encourage that, it would happen through the planning commission. Mm -hmm. But there may be a role for the DDA to play with projects that are occurring within the DDA district in terms of I don't know if the DDA wanted to set aside a certain amount of funds to be available to support or encourage. You know, mm. energy efficiency, or if you wanted to, sure. if the DDA said, you know, oh, we want to do this, but we want to target existing properties that are renovating, we want to encourage them to add these things as opposed to new project. I don't know. Some, you know, that's, I could see the DDA doing something like that. Are you a resident? Mm -hmm. So that would, so I, I'm a non resident, but we'd have two residents. Tans and residents. Yeah. You know, I don't know if you want to get uh, Maureen or, or uh, what about what about uh, Jeff? Jeff's a resident. Is us both. So Maureen, 
I, it's up. It's up to you. You're the chair. You appoint the committee. Yeah. Reem, Todd, and Jeff are the ones who are here. So. Well, let's talk to them and see. Make sure they're interested. To, you know, I'm just, I just should just appoint them because they're not here. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. Surprise. Well, we want to make it easy to like come with questions, brainstorming, yeah. document, let's move. Yeah. But we will, I'll send out to the entire group that we're looking for a smaller committee and then we'll pick a, a time and date to get together. Okay. Well, let's just pick that time and date. Good. All right. After the meeting, we can do that. Yeah. But one thing I do want to point out is that the the master plan, which is not just my master plan, but the township's right. master plan, um, <laughs> is um, in its uh, final stages. Um, it's There's a, a public hearing scheduled before the Planning Commission. It's a joint meeting with the Board of Trustees, kind of an unusual situation, um, on the 27th. Um, and, and my anticipation is that shortly after that meeting, um, the master plan will be approved and sort of finalized and there is a section of the yeah, master plan that it re that. references the downtown development authority and i'm wondering if um we we'll looked at that to edit so we'll yeah if there's we'll some, can we sort of delegate to this subcommittee um sort of at least that looking at sure. that language to make sure that it's consistent yeah. with yeah. with sure. the, you know because it was just like a half a page, right? Yeah, it's not very, it's, like it's not very, it's not very, it's not very right. substantial. I just mm -hmm. wasn't sure if anyone at the D within the DDA board had looked at it yet. We did. We did. Oh, okay. All right. Well, no, we talking about. The, the window for opportunity for for it's changing it is, is closing. So, yeah. so by the twenty, so we'll do that this week. Here. Perfect. And then uh, recommendation for the trustees. All right. Good. We're making progress on that. We'll get that done. Any other questions for the master plan, the DDA master plan? And again, if you haven't looked at it, there's a link for the big master plan to look at. Um, I'll, I'll make sure I'll forward that out and you should take a look at it, so. All right, um, the, the uh, Boulevard directional sign project, so that's done. I don't know if anybody noticed the Boulevard out there, but those are gone, recycled. And it looks good out there. I'll pay for it. You know, I didn't notice them. Like, <laughs> good. That's the way it's supposed to be, right? Before they were just noticing them because they looked bad, so now they don't even notice them. <laughs> and then I updated you on the bus shelter project, so hopefully we'll get that done too before the snow flies. And again, um, there's five bus shelters that are going up and down um, Jackson Boulevard. AATA, there's three A's. They were very excited about them. Worked well with um, them. They just did an excellent job, so. There's some, you know, as far as the pavements, just the, you know, the, it's got to be handicap accessible. They're working with, um, you know, all those that, that uh, have to make that project um, fit for everybody. Um, now, so it's, it's going well with uh, Washtenaw, uh, Washtenaw Engineering show over there. So hopefully we'll get that done. Feeder roads, this is just the, some old business, some items that we had on here before. I just wanted to make sure... They didn't come off, so these are potential projects down the road. And there is a list about four pages in that talk about the cost of those feeder roads. And this is the list that Will was talking about. That every year, Silo gets a list of, oh, these projects could be done this year. And how much money this can Silo put in versus um, Washington versus the state possibly. So every year they kind of put together this, and they notify us in the DDA if there's projects in the DDA that, that they're looking at. So, I just put this down as reference of the costs because every year I go to uh, the, the construction companies, the road contracts directly and get quotes, but at least the uh, Washington Road Com Commission put these numbers in for us. So will the, the trustees join the, brand, the dust control? Dust control, um, yes, the dust control, is, that was the first agreement. Then we did a part two agreement after um, the DDA um, sort of partnered on Enterprise Drive. So this, the second part of the uh, 2021 agreement includes Enterprise Drive and the improvements to um, April, so the, the fog seal on April Drive. And then um, there were a bunch of um, other projects that were proposed in the original um, proposal from the Road Commission um, in terms of um, maintenance, crack sealing, um, um, and the township pulled those out 
and contracted for those separately because we could get a much lower cost than what the road commission was proposing. So those that work is happening, but independent of the agreement with the road commission. Good. Who, who, who put that together? Who put that together? The deal with the yeah. other contractor? Um, it was... It sounds like a Luke Kidder. It, yeah, Luke Kidder knew the, uh, gotcha. uh, okay. the um, contractor. It's... Um, Cadillac. No. Uh, no Skideller. Yeah. Skideller is okay. the name of the contractor, and they've done a lot of work for the township over the years. Great. All right. Um, I had an update on the North Z pedestrian pathway. Uh, I don't think there's been any progress there. Yeah, they were paving. They're moving. They're moving. Well, down, down there. Oh. That's not the DDA. I love the DDA no. area. And then, I don't know if you get the, the uh, reports from um, Washington um, Sheriff Department, but it talks about the most dangerous intersections. And it's actually Zeeb and Jackson now. Our intersection here is one of the most dangerous in the county. Which it used to be the Circles of Death out by Costco. Mm -hmm. That was the, the most one. Yeah, I think that's their official name. Yeah. <laughs> Circles of Death. So it's just interesting that we've got some, and it is, it's the Michigan turn. But I was surprised to see that on there. So again, if we can help with safety in that area with pedestrians or anything else, I think we should. And that's all I have. If there's anything else from you guys? We got a couple follow-ups. We'll follow up with the master plan. Um, we're going to look at what, this amendment to the budget. Um, I'm going to dig in with Sandy when, if she's if she when she gets back on. The revenue from the um, for the DDA, and if there's different buckets still left, so we'll dig into all that. Any more on Zeb out here with the ninety four? It's kind of what I, I I don't think there's any progress on that. Anything change on ninety four and the bullet possible? You know, the property across the street? No, no. I mean, um, I'm unaware of any plans. Um, that, you know, the developer has any new plans. Um, I don't think there are any. Okay. None that have come to the Nothing township. Nothing with the state to step in and help? Or... So um, we have talked with uh, um, the state, I guess. Um, uh, no, not MDOT. Um, we're, sort of, we're working with um, Representative Lazinski um, to try and find funds, but the focus is on um, the pedestrian improvements um, at this point because there's no uh, plan for, uh, well, maybe I should back up. So um, I clarified, and I, I think I shared this at our last meeting, I clarified with the Road Commission that uh, from their point of view, there's no crisis in terms of traffic on North Steep, that it's really the situation in terms of the, the necessity for um, any changes to the automobile traffic on North Steep is driven by the development. And there's no proposal in terms of the development. So from the Road Commission's point of view, there's no sort of urgency to doing anything about uh, reconfiguring the road or, or anything that might be done um, to change that traffic situation. So the focus at this point is on what we know um, we're doing, and that is the pedestrian improvements so extending the, the pedestrian non-motorized pathway all the way up to connect to the border-to-border -border trail in the north and making improvements um, to make it safer for pedestrians um, to get across the highway on the bridge. So, um, you know, months ago we met with um, the head of MDOT and, and he pointed to that particular aspect of, the, of what we were looking at um, and said that's that's the part of it that he would consider to be sort of the first thing, the first priority, the first thing to go for. Um, and it certainly is the thing that we have, the element of the whole project that has the most um, support from residents in, in terms of, um, you know, there's support for a millage um, to make improvements to pedestrian pathways throughout the township. So. I mean, in, in the sense that we have any indication of where the township is, it's support for pedestrian improvements. 
Um, now, um, if there were a project proposed for the former ProQuest site, that could change things. That could change the conversation. But right now, there's no proposal. There's nothing sort of. Well, there's no proposal because there's they want five million dollars to fix the road. Well, so it's I kind know. of cart before the horse. Is that master plan for? I think if you, if you fix the road, there'll definitely be. And that's blight over there. I just want to get that something over there. Well, I, I think everyone agrees that um, it's un, you know that's that, that site is is you know should be developed. It should be <laughs> something. <laughs> something should be done with it besides what's occurring right now. Um, is and, that master plan for mixed juice? I'm not. I'm gonna go check. Yeah, I think that's. The, I I don't know off the top of my head how it's master planned, but I know right now it's zoned because it proposed residential hotel and office. Yeah, but it's it's zoned. I think it, it, they were gonna have to do a PUD. Right. Because I think it's zoned industrial. I, I thought it was mixed use. But I think it, I think you're right. I think it is, but nobody wants it to be the neighborhood doesn't want it to be industrial. Right. They don't even want it to be a hotel. Right. Well. Um, yeah. So when there's a proposal, then there will be an opportunity for a conversation and, and you know, then we'll have public meetings and we'll have, you know, dialogue with, you know, the, you know, the immediate neighbors and the larger community and so on. But there's no proposal right now. So there's nothing from the Road Commission's point of view. It, 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 without that proposal, there's nothing sort of making this urgent. Well, and. The, and just so the rest of the DDA understands that the road commission is, is if we were to take the announcement project, they are the big winner. Because they would they don't have to contribute, but they own how many acres? A lot. A lot of acreage that is dependent on that North Sea Road. So this all this land that you, you know, those of us who are in this room can see out the windows um, over there, um, that's the land that you're talking about. So, you know, that's what I wonder every time they kind of chip away at our our budgets, our funding, that's less for us to use to go towards that. Um, and so, anyway, just yeah. so the other DDA members are aware. You know, well, there's nothing new, basically nothing new on that project. Well, sure, it's sure it is. I do have one more question about <laughs> Sorry. I, see that I gave you the long answer. I should sure. have given you a choice. I see that the township is changing their, the way they build doing something as far as billing for sewer and water. Is the rate the same for residential as it is for commercial and vice versa? The rate for billing for they're, gonna bill, they're, they're changing they're changing their, there's some kind of a surcharge or something that I'm not sure what's going on with the, the way they're gonna uh, charge for sewer and water in South Township. I don't know if it's a proposal my out there and I think it's either the trustees have passed it or they're going to. Um, I just want to know that Personally, I, I, I oppose charging different for commercial as, as, for, as for residential because we only have a fixed amount of water and sewer available. Yeah, I don't, I don't recall a difference in charging for commercial or residential. I think it's it, it treated the units the same, but I don't know that for a fact. I have to double check. There was a proposed some kind of increase balancing the sewer and the water usage cost proportionately is what I understood. Is that what it, I, that's why I don't know if it's right or not, but it seemed like they had to adjust, adjust where the money's were. We, we can find the answer to that question. I just don't know it off the top of my head. Yeah, 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 okay. It sounded like the questions. sewer was going up. That's what I thought too. Well, the, yeah, the, so the... It's, I think it's a maintenance search or something, it? because our rates can, it's something to do with the meeting. So, I'll maintain their end of it. Okay, anyway, yeah. move on. Sorry. <laughs> Any other questions before we adjourn? All those in favor, right in the meeting, say aye. 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 Motion passes. Adjourned. Thank you. Find time for that meeting. Yeah, that's fine. Are we off? Are we off? Well, um, I thought we had.